Hi, welcome to my webinar about three reasons to try out dog agility. I am Caitlin with One Mind Dogs. I have been in the agility world for almost my entire life. I have been doing dog related things since I was three years old. So you could say that I'm a bit of a dog fanatic. I currently have six dogs in my house that range from border collies to a Siberian Husky and one small Papillon. So I have quite a bit of experience with dogs of all different types, which is quite a fun thing to do. Um, and that's kind of the great thing is that the more different types of dogs that I've gotten to experience, the more I got to see how many similarities the dogs have as we're going through. So today we are going to be talking about three reasons why you should try out dog agility. So let's jump into it. The main three reasons, and I'm sure there are many more than just three, but I wanted to talk about the three ones that I find most important about dog agility today. Number one, we're gonna get to know your dog, get to know them on a better level. Two, it's great physical and mental stimulation for the dog. And three, it's so easy to get started. You don't need any equipment. You don't need special space. You really just need your dog. So let's go in detail each of these things so that you can get a better idea of what agility is about. So. Our first reason, and I think one of the most important, honestly, is that you get a better understanding of your dog as you are working with them. Any new thing you train your dog, you're going to get to know them a little bit. But what kind of things are we going to get to know? We're going to dive into your dog's brain. What kinds of things do they like? How do they think? and how do they solve problems? Each of these things helps us to learn how we can make things easier for your dog in the future. So how do they approach certain situations? Are there things that they don't like? Are there things that they really love? Um, it's all of that. So let's go a little bit more in depth than that. What does your dog like? Now, these are things that they interact with on a daily basis, or maybe there's something really special that they love that they only get maybe once a week or if they go to a special place. Um, when I'm talking about motivators, I'm talking about anything that your dog interacts with on a basis that they really enjoy. So this could be toys, it could be food, but what kind of things do your dogs like? Uh, I have had a range of dogs with a range of different things that they love. Uh, quite a wide variety of my dogs love those horse-sized jolly balls. And so if I can give them one of those in the yard, they will play with that for hours. So knowing that they like that, I can use that to train them all kinds of new things, which is really great. But maybe there's some more subtle things I could get to know about my dog that's going to make a difference in other training sessions as well. The other thing you wanna take note of is how does your dog like to be praised? Do they like to be touched? Do they like you to run around and kind of rough house with them like they would with another dog? Do they like when your voice gets high pitched or do they like you to be a little bit more serious? Kind of like with people, dogs like to be interacted with in different ways depending on their mood and stimulus level. So when it comes to praising the dogs, do they like something like, that was really good, good Good job or wow super that was amazing immediately going up a few octaves in my voice most of the time the dogs will get a little bit more excited their ears will perk up the tail might wag and this is actually a challenge I have for you that you can play around with already something that I challenge most people I will see see if you can get your dog's tail to wag without using toys or treats. Just use your voice. What types of pitches get your dog really excited? Now this might mean you end up with your dog in your lap, but I'm not seeing any bad things there. <laughs> so see what you can do to get your dog's tail to wag and kind of take note of that. They're gonna be a little bit different for each of them. For my dogs, they kind of start to feed off each other when I start getting silly with my voice. But little things like that may actually be harder than you think. So get to know your dog. What do they like? What gets their tail wagging and excited? The other element that you want to get to know about your dog is what time of day are they active? When you're going into any training session for any type of behavior, you want to train in your most optimal moments. 
This might be something common throughout the day. Does your dog know what time is breakfast time? Do you normally go for a morning walk or an afternoon walk? Do you notice that your dog starts to have little triggers as they're going around throughout the day that starts to get them a little bit hyped up? My dogs are amazing at telling time. They will tell you within a few moments if it is time for a meal or if it's time to go out and play. And they start to get really rowdy. This is a really great thing for me to note because as they're getting rowdy, they're expecting something. So they know this time we usually start to play or this time we're usually getting our meal and therefore they are ready for it. So if I were to use that time of the day to put in a training session to teach them a new trick or to go out and do something exciting, they are going to be a lot more perceptive to whatever I'm going to be doing because they already expect something around that time in the day. However, it's going to be a little bit harder to get them excited to do anything with me if I choose a time that they're normally napping throughout the day. So there's kind of lulls throughout the day for my dogs. I'm quite active with them, but there are definitely lulls in the day. And if I choose when they're normally doing a nap time, they're not going to be as impressed with me. <laughs> um, the same is true for trying to do something after a meal time. After that meal time, they are in nap mode. They are not ready to do anything else active, but maybe your dog is the opposite. So take note of that because all of that information is going to be helping you in everything you do in life with your dog. What kind of things do they like? How do they like to be interacted with? And what time of the day do they get the most crazy? All of these are things that you get to know about your dog through agility as well. All right, let's continue through. Now, in getting to know your dog, you also get to know how your dog thinks and problem solves. Now, in this case, there are two types of dogs and the dogs can change what type of dog they are as they gain confidence or as they gain understanding and age. But there's really two types of dogs. There are doers and there are thinkers. When you are thinking about a doer or a thinker, you're gonna go into your session just a little bit different. So what is a doer and what is a thinker? A doer is a dog that just continuously is moving. They don't mind doing a whole bunch of repetitions of the same thing or similar things. They're just eager to kind of get in there, get the job going and just keep moving the entire time. They're not really putting a lot of thought into what they're doing, but they are continuously going through things. On the other side of the coin, there is the thinker. Thinkers are going to sit back and analyze. They're going to do things in a much slower manner in the beginning because they want to get it right the first time. Now, if you treat your doer like a thinker or a thinker like a doer, maybe your sessions won't go as easily. So what kind of a dog do you think that you have? Do you have the dog that is just rearing to go and wants to try a million things at once? Or do you have a dog that sits back and is a little more thoughtful because they want to get it right? Both of these dogs are actually great for agility. And both of these dogs can turn into each other over time. You can get a thinker to get a lot more confident and start doing more, and you can get a doer to start thinking more. But knowing what your dog is helps you, us to custom fit their type of training session. So if I'm trying to just do a whole bunch of repetitions with a dog that really just wants to get things right, I'm gonna get them to shut down and not be as excited. But if I go into my session with my thinker and I do small pieces where they can be really successful and think it through, they're going to get excited and their confidence is going to grow over time. So thinking about that. Now, while you're thinking about that, maybe also think a little bit, are you a doer or are you a thinker? Because just like for the dogs, the human brain works in that way as well. I have a few of each for my dogs. I have some doers and I have some thinkers and it definitely gets quite interesting in the training sessions when I get to get to know what kind of thinking my dog does. But this allows me to kind of break down my sessions differently so each dog can feel successful. And that's what's really cool about getting to know your dog in that sense. Um, knowing them is gonna help you 
to problem solve if they get stuck somewhere. So if there's a challenge that they don't like, maybe uh, walking into the vet office and getting on the scale is really scary. Knowing how your dog analyzes the situations is gonna make it easier for you to break down that situation for them so they can be successful. And in being successful, it's gonna boost their confidence. And the next thing they learn, they're gonna get more confident and the next thing more confident. And before you know it, they're really eager to learn just everything possible. So that's a really fun and exciting thing to be thinking about here. Now, the other great thing about agility, other than getting to know your dog and doing a deep dive into their brain, is you get both mental and physical stimulation. Now, tell me this, are you someone who has commonly said, my dog never gets tired. I've had people tell me, oh, I took my dog on a three mile hike. I always take them on a three mile hike before class and they're just more crazy. The reason for this is that physical exercise alone isn't enough to tire out a dog. In fact, more exercise alone equals more stamina. So when my student was going and taking three mile hikes every week before class, the dog now required at least three miles minimum before they were starting to get tired. So you're making it harder for yourself as you're going through if you're only focusing on the physical aspect of tiring out your dog. Now the physical aspect is still really important, but what you need to pair it with is also mental stimulation. So what is physical stimulation and what is mental stimulation? So Physical is going to be the exercise for the body. This would be things like hiking, swimming, walking, agility, playing in the yard. Things that are mental for the brain are things that get the dogs thinking. So this will normally be letting them sniff, let them read that story on that tree that another dog left for them. Um, usually things like hiding a treat and letting them search for it is going to be really exciting and tiring for the dog's brain. New tricks will also get the mental brain thinking, especially if you're doing some form of shaping. And guess what? Agility. So if I can pair this physical aspect to this mental aspect and put them together, I have a tired dog. In fact, just 15 minutes of mental stimulation for the dog will get them more tired than 30 minutes of physical stimulation. So if you can actually combine those two, you're going to find that your dog is a lot calmer in life and happier. So if you found that you are someone that just commonly says, my dog is never tired, try throwing in some more mental stimulation or better yet, trying out agility that adds both mental and physical. So you get best of both worlds. Now, it's important to also note that the same is true for humans. So agility is great for both the dogs and the handlers to get that physical stimulation and mental stimulation going, which I think is just very, very cool how that works. Now, the third option or the third option, the third reason is also really great to know, and that is you can train from home. You can do everything and agility starting from your own home or even your living room. So foundation for agility, especially through One Mind Dogs, doesn't have any limits. And how you get started is you only need a dog, the motivator that we talked about a few slides ago, and some random objects, random objects that the dogs are going to interact with. You don't need to get started specialized equipment or a huge space. That is one of the biggest myths as getting started, you need all of the specialized equipment. You definitely don't. You can get started using your living room and random objects. And I actually have some examples of this, of random objects we've used in the foundation courses. So let me pull that up. First, I wanna show you a video of my dogs working through some of the actual foundation exercises uh, in the class. So here we have. Yeah! cardboard boxes with a broomstick through the middle. Random blink. Stairs! 
on the front steps of the uh, house. How cool is that? All of those were actual foundation exercises that we do in the One Mind Dogs Foundation course. Uh, still don't believe me, I have another video that's going to show some made objects and equipment we've done. Now, agility not only gets the dogs thinking about how they can use their body and use their brain, it also gives them confidence for other things in life. So these other things I'm now able to do with my dogs because they learned about agility. So here's some made objects that we've done. Here is a tunnel made out of chairs and a gate. How fun is that? Ooh, some weaving poles made out of a cone and a uh, dog treat box. Bird feeders in my yard. And here I'm actually able to start practicing some handling that will help me direct him through the course later on. A vacuum cleaner in my storage room. Look how small that space is. And I'm still able to get him thinking and turning and using his food. This is something we can do now because we did agility. Going around random stumps in our urban environment and jumping on random objects, once again, in our urban environment. These are things that my dogs were not comfortable with before. And now that I've gotten to know them and agility, they're so brave to try these. I can send them on logs in uh, when I go hiking. I can send them up on random objects in the park. Uh, it makes for posing them for photos really fun as well. So that is something that is really good <laughs> to note that came from learning agility. So you only need your dog, their favorite motivator toys or treats, and random objects to get started in agility. Now, agility is for all breeds, all ages, all people. As you noticed from my previous videos, there were dogs of all types in there. There was a standard poodle, there was a Siberian Husky, there was American Bully Dog. Um, there were just so many different types of dogs and they were all learning the same things and excited. Now, in the video was all me because these were either my dogs or student dogs that I was borrowing for videos, but anyone can do agility. In fact, I have some students currently learning agility that are in their late 70s and they are loving every bit of it with their dog so there are no limits to who can do agility or what dog can do agility dogs of all ages now if you don't believe me i actually want to show you a full lesson that we have in our foundation course to kind of give you a taste of what you would be getting if you signed up for our foundation course so once again this is a full lesson that you we have in our foundation course which shows you all the fun details so let's take it This one we're going to be teaching that go around a wing that you saw all the preview videos for actually. There she's using a trash can. How excited is that? A trash can and a bowl and a puppy. just needed the puppy with a collar, a random object, in this case a trash can, and a treat bowl, or a food bowl, or a plate, something to put a reward in. Show the puppy you're putting it there, and then step away to start sending them around the object. This is just a step one. This can go so many places with just using this one object. We can have so much fun with it. Get the dogs really thinking. Get them moving. Which I think is one of the best parts.
increasing the distance, upping the stakes. In this case, you would use whatever distance you have. If it's your living room, just a couple of feet is fine, or a meter. or started looking at that bowl because he knew that the food was in there and wanted to go to that food bowl. I know you're excited to try this out. You're already thinking about what random objects you can use. Oh, and I've used so many different objects for this one, which is so exciting. Or that you can do both sides, left and right. You want to keep the balance. Now this next step uses an assistant, but I'm gonna let you in on a secret. You don't need any assistance for this. Now, they were using an assistant, but if you sign up for the foundation course, you actually get access to a guided course where I take you through these lessons and I work them with my own dogs without any assistance. So I show you how you can work this if it's just you and your dog with nobody else to help. If you have an assistant, great, but they're not required. How fun is that? That is a showing of one of our lessons. So you could see that that dog is quite a large dog. And in this case, he was just a little puppy, um, but that any dog can do this. So thinking about what kind of random objects you could already be sending your dog around. I've used people in the past that they could stand still. I've used trees, trash cans, fence posts, oh, so many different objects to send my dogs around. As you saw from that video uh, before as well, I've used statues in my yard that I found. Um, you can find things in the park. Anything that you can find, you can start figuring out how to get your dog to interact with them. And we help you learn how to interact with those objects through our Foundation for Agility course. So you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to know what you're doing. Just give it a try. Do something fun with your dog and we'll do the rest. So very cool. The other part is see your dog for who they are. Are they a thinker? Are they a doer? How can we build on that? How can we get them excited to get going? So this is my little titanium. Uh, she is a big thinker. She likes to analyze everything before she does it. So when we were first starting her very first session, she would really sit back and try to figure out what I wanted before even attempting a single step. A little different from my other dog, who was a big doer, who was just running around, trying to do everything with the objects, trying to put feet on it, trying to run around it, trying to bark at it. So many exciting things happen in that course. So <laughs> just keeping that in mind and Take the time to get to know your dog. Mixing your mental stimulation and some physical stimulation, you are going to get a happy, tired dog. And they're gonna start telling you more things. And one of my favorite sayings is that the dogs speak to those who know how to listen. The dogs have so much to tell us and they read our body language so beautifully. And this is something that we have learned over time and actually something that you can learn by downloading the One Mind Dogs Method ebook that is linked down at the bottom or at the end of this, which is going to teach you a lot about our method and how we got to know the dogs. It all started with Tekla, who suddenly became deaf, and we had to learn so much. How do you communicate with a deaf dog when, as humans, we like to use our voice and our hands and everything? <laughs> the dogs are so much about body language. So the more we get to know them and the more we listen to what they want to tell us, the easier training them anything in life becomes. So I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you are going to give agility a try because it can be addicting and a lot of fun. And I look forward to seeing all of the exciting things that you do with your dogs in the future. I'm gonna show you just one more time that video of my dogs working through things in the class, just to kind of show you that you can do it on anything. And then I will see you later. Don't you want to have fun like this? <laughs> so many different rooms, so many different dogs, so many different
different objects. So it limits it. Plus, that was some fun music. All right. I hope that you give agility a try. And I hope to see some video when you do give it a try and that I had so much fun teaching you about this. So I hope that you have a great rest of your day and that you're racing to your kitchen to find something your dog wants to go try it really fast. Even if it's dark, just go try it. All right, have a great rest of your day.